Hey, what's up, guys? Good to be back with you again. And no, I'm not the person who won the eBay listing for this, but I do want to tell you a couple of quick things about this that might be interesting to those of you who followed either the blog or the YouTube channel so far. So uh, what we're talking about here, of course, is this game. This is the uh, Hank Bauer um, Be a Manager vintage board game that just went up on eBay. It was won for a little bit over $1,500. Um, apologies for the uh, sound in the background. Um, this is a rare game that was open, looked at, but never played with. It was put in a closet for 50-plus years. Um, but they apparently lost one of the runners. I don't know exactly what happened there. Um, I believe that this comes with only the National League cards for the 1966 season. And you can see here, if you look at the uh, pictures, the game looks in, like it's in great condition. Um, I mean, look at that. It looks like nothing has even been taken out or anything like that. The box is a little bit beat up, which you can imagine for it having sitting, being sitting around in, a, um, in the uh, closet for 60 years. Um, I guess 55 years if we want to be technical about it. Interesting stuff. Um, now, the interesting thing about this is, uh, of course, first of all, the um, winning bid for the game was so high. My understanding is that this game usually um, winds up going for a high amount of uh, money pretty much no matter who is selling it. I mean, we have a seller here who has one feedback, which is not a great thing. But for this sort of thing, it comes up so rarely that most people aren't really going to care and they're not really going to mind. You know, they're going to be able to uh, go ahead and take that um, risk. Um, a couple of things you can find out about this. So there was this guy, Daryl Proctor, who wrote about this on a Sabre Baseball Gaming. This blog, by the way, I've been contacting these guys over and over again, trying to get them to pay attention to my blog, but they don't seem to care. Um, this doesn't tell me very much about this game, unfortunately. I mean, there's a little bit of information about it. You can watch the YouTube video if you want. There's not really too much on there. I'll put a link to this down in the bottom so you can check it out. I checked this out over here at this hobby shop that said that it seems that this game only uh, showed up with 1966 cards, which makes me leads me to believe that there might not have been any um, further seasons for it. And then, of course, there's the page over here on Board Game Geek as a 9.0 rating, but, I mean, how many people actually have played this? There are five people who say that they own the game, which is not really that much. Um, and uh, I'll tell you, there's a real interesting thing about this as I take a look here. I see no comments from any of these people who own it. Apparently one ma managed to uh, make its way over to Japan. So when we go over here and we look at some of this stuff, and a lot of it's not really that um, descriptive, but what is, and you can't quite see this here, unfortunately this picture is not a very good quality, is that dice roll chart. Now I'll show this to you um, over on the uh, eBay listing itself because I noticed that this game uses the same mechanics that we've seen in some of these older games. In fact, you can see that here when it comes to these numbers, right, which will go 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, blah, 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 which means that there are other numbers on the pitcher side. Um, uh, so what happens with this game is you roll three dice, and there are three white die, and um, there's, like, really not much of a rhyme or reason as to uh, how the die are used and how it's converted into the number, right? What happens is there is this die chart that tells you how it's converted. So 111 is a 1, 112 is a 2, 113 is a 3, and so on and so forth. We have seen this before. This is from Steele's baseball game from 1912 or whatever year it was that that came out. It's exactly the same thing. The only difference is they changed this over to a single number. Some of the play results apparently are on the pitcher cards, and some of them are on the hitter cards, and that's the way that it works. Right, so I mean, it's it's exactly the same mechanics as we saw with the steel baseball game. Unfortunately, we can't zoom in more for you to see this, but it's obvious that that's the case. And I knew that was the case when I heard that there were 56 different possible dice rolls. The only game that I know of that has 56 possible dice rolls is a game that uses that mechanism where you have three dice that look exactly the same, and you organize them from either biggest to smallest or smallest to largest. And here they did smallest to largest. It sort of shows you that the mechanics for a lot of these baseball games really don't change a lot from the uh, traditional type of uh, baseball um, uh, uh, ba dice baseball games that you would see back in the old days. So if you're curious about Steel's baseball game, I'm not going to be able to show you how to play it. Apparently there is a YouTube video there you can find that will show you exactly what the mechanics are. But that's sort of the way that it works. Um, the way that this game worked is exactly the same way that Steel's game worked, except that there is a player card. Now, it would have probably been easier to play this game as if instead of 1, they had written 111 and then 112 and 113. I don't really know why they didn't do that, right? Because that would save a step. Then you wouldn't have to go and use, you know, this ugly chart right here, right? Because as it stands now, you're going to have to use a chart. You have to use the cards, two cards at once, because it can be either on the batter or the pitcher side as well as the chart. And I'm supposing there are probably rules about what happens if the same number shows up on the batter and the hitter side or something like that. I'm guessing there was some attempt maybe at like a lefty-righty thing or something like that going on. That's a lot to do when you have 56 total possible outcomes. I don't know, you know. 
I don't know if I would consider that to be a very well-designed game, you know, but um, anyway. I'm, I'm just going to say here that there's probably a reason why this game, though it seems to have been sold through the early 70s, there's probably a reason why you're not seeing a whole lot of different um, uh, player cards. I mean, this guy who writes this for um, the uh, Sabre uh, Baseball Gaming blog mentions that he used the 1966 season. It's pretty clear to me, as it says here, that only the 1966 season was um, ever created for the game. So there you have it. That's um, the story, as far as I can tell, behind uh, Hank Bauer's Be a Manager game. In case you're curious, no, I'm not going to ever buy the game. I'm not interested in paying, you know, $1,500 for a game that looks like it wasn't really that well designed to begin with. <laughs> um, I don't think so. But it's interesting to see this game go over so much money. This also, by the way, and I've talked about this before, this should put into some context for you just how good the deal was for the original 1952 and 1953 Apple baseball seasons, which sold for not too much more than this. Right. I mean, that gives you sort of an idea as to what kind of area you're comparing this with. Though this game is rare, I bet you anything there are more copies of this out there than the 1952 original APA baseball single column set. I would make that bet any day of the week. So, love to know what you think about this. Let me know down below. Talk to you later. Bye.